Hey everybody and welcome back. This is Dustin Meyer and sorry again for the echo, but we're still just trying to, you know, uh, get things set up here in the new studio. However, I just wanted to, we, I've gotten a lot of requests about doing a tutorial on the Portrait Pro background tool and I've only used it a couple of times, so we're going to kind of work through it today. Now, disclaimer, uh, for those of you who've been faithful followers, you know that um, this isn't just a quick two-minute tutorial. We're just, it'll be as long as it needs to be. So I'll edit it down in case there's, you know, sections that can be trimmed out. But for the most part, I want to walk you guys through the steps that, you know, I take to try and just figure it out. So anyways, let's just jump right into it. So as you can see, I've already got an image imported in here. Uh, I went ahead and chose a green screen. Now, from my understanding, the background tool will work with any colored background. I have tinkered with it a little bit, and I find that solid colors are usually much easier. But I went ahead with green just to kind of, you know, make sure it works. But uh, anyways, so I've already got the gentleman's headshot here all touched up and everything. And uh, from here at the bottom, we're going to go all the way down to where it says background. We're going to click on and then we're going to open it here and we're going to click uh, hide. I'll say hide forever because you know I've, I've done this a few times. So we're going to click create mask. And it's going to go ahead and think and kind of like what it does with the facial recognition as well as the skin area. Whenever you go into skin smoothing, you can select the actual skin area. It will automatically detect where the actual person, their outline is. And most of the time it's fairly accurate, but I have found that, uh, well, at least every time that I've used it, I've had to go in and, you know, tweak it a little bit. And sometimes the settings that it, um, the sometimes the settings that I use work, other times I have to change it a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and just try with this. Uh, okay. So looking at the results, um, wow. Okay, uh, so uh, as you can see on the left side is the background and on the right is uh, the mask where, you know, your subject will be cut out of the photo. And I think what we're going to do here is, okay, so let's see, we're going to do smart background because see, we've got a few little green spots right here at the bottom. So let's see, I'm going to zoom in. We're going to go down here and I think it's going to be smart background. Now for this to work, you have to click and then drag and then it'll find the background. Now I've just tried to just click it before and it says, Hey, we need an area to sample from. So let's see so far. So good. And as you can see over here on the left hand side, it added that green in there. So it, put it into the actual, you know, background area. So I know that it's, you know, that it knows that that's the background. So now we're going to go over here and do the same thing. There we go. And kind of like with the skin tool, especially, you know, if you need to go in and remove some of the skin stuff, um, you know, when you do the skin softening, it's uh, the, I don't know what you call it, but the brush, the detector size is when it detects, it's pretty accurate. I'm, I'm really impressed for the most part. So let's see, we're going to zoom into face. And the reason why I'm doing this is I want to just check the edges here to make sure that everything's nice and sharp. Now, for those of you guys uh, that can see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. We've got a little bit of a uh, discrepancy here. So we're going to click smart foreground. I'm going to increase my brush size a little bit. And let's see here. You know, what? we're going to try fill foreground, whoops, or add foreground. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and fill that in so I can see why uh, because his hair is a little bit thinner on that one edge right there, or at least the color of his hair is a little bit, you know, 
too light so it may have had a problem so I'm just gonna try something here I went ahead and just added a whole swatch of background here because I want to see if we uh, so I use the regular foreground tool and just kind of paint it around the area and then I'm gonna click on smart background and do the exact same thing that we did before with those little smaller triangles at the bottom of the picture in between his arms we're just gonna see what it does so let's see here Okay. So far, so good. Get the rest of those little speckles out of there. Let's see. Whoop. And move up here. Uh, Let's just do background. There we go. Make it just a little bit easier. And you can also look over here and see, like we can actually paint over here sometimes if the spots are too small. Uh, can't use the spacebar grabby tool. There we go. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's one way to do it. And then let's see over here. Let's go back to smart background. Just want to get the rest of that green out of there. And this might be one of the parts where I kind of speed up a little bit. Okay, so I think for the most part, we've got a really good mask to work with. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into a background image and they've got you know, you can just pick a flat background color. Uh, you can also create a gradient, which essentially would be the same thing in Photoshop. Uh, you can add a uh, the original background, which actually is kind of cool. I've used this one before where, um, so if you're in Photoshop, uh, if you remember, you can do like a Gaussian blur in the background if you did sort of like a smart select tool, something like that. And, um, which for me hasn't always been extremely accurate, but um, but you can blur the background a little bit. So if you got some crazy stray hairs, I think I actually have another tutorial on uh, on YouTube in one of my videos that I can uh, share with you guys in the description below. But let's see, um, I can't remember if they have stock images of the background. Okay, so I did a little bit of digging, and they actually do have a built-in background. Uh, thingy. So if you go to new background image, click on uh, open built-in backgrounds folder, click select image. Then let's see here. Okay, we've got a number of different backgrounds to choose from. Um, so let's try this one here, a little bit of a more natural kind of look, I guess. Most of them are outdoors or it's like a textured background. Um, you know, you may want to have, you know, create your own stock library of images where it's like an indoor, maybe a brick wall or something along those lines. But let's see. So first off, wow, I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed. Um, so this one already has the background slightly blurred. Um, you can, I guess change the rotation, which is kind of cool. Let me undo that. And then also now one thing you will notice uh, that I just noticed is that the um, the face doesn't show the actual retouching that you've done in Portrait Pro. I don't know if that's like a memory thing or something where it just kind of sets that aside while you're working on this, but it's um, but I have used this tool before just testing it out. And then when I close out of the background tool, then it does reapply the facial retouching stuff to it. So don't worry about that. Um, now, something that is really, uh, okay, so crossfade, we're not going to mess with that. But something that is, you know, you've got adjust background tool so you can blur it even more if you want. Uh, obviously, this one's already blurred enough. Uh, you can change the brightness, might make it see what it looks like a little bit darker. Uh, contrast. We'll go up a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy with it because I want them to kind of blend in. Well, maybe we'll go a little bit darker. There we go. Uh, exposure, flash recovery. I don't really know. Uh, 
there we go probably i guess something if you used flash in one of those images adjust foreground so that would be you know the mask which um i mean i guess if you wanted to try and match the uh exposure for whatever picture you have for the background uh along with whatever you have in the foreground and then let's see what else auto color no we're not going to mess with that so okay now I'm really kind of uh, kind of amazed because this did a really good job uh, as far as you know getting it nice and sharp maybe just a little bit over here but I think that just has a lot to do with the trim of his hair uh, so it was a little bit more difficult to nail that but I mean looking at it for now the separation looks really good and I think however you know when you know this isn't going to be it's not always going to be perfect so what you can do if you feel like there's just still you know the i don't know the masking tool just doesn't like the edge or whatever doesn't quite line up or if you need to make some adjustments if you go back here to background mask then you can adjust the edges of the mask so you can say okay adjust the whole mask you can do uh maybe sharpen and what that'll do is we're going to zoom into one of the edges here and we're going to go one to one i know this takes time but i know this is something that you guys you know really want to uh to understand before you go and download the demo so okay uh i did sharpen all the way up and it's basically going to sharpen the edge then we're going to go to uh, blur all the way down and as you can see right there it softly blurred the images you can actually see it better over here but we're going to go back to normal and that's a pretty defined line which i think is really good for our purposes uh the other thing whoop <laughs> i'll get back to you abel <laughs> you guys remember abel um so here's the other thing too if you want to create a slight lens blur you can go to blur like if you want to create a lens blur like more around the edge of the subject you can go to blur and then i think if you go to shrink it'll pull the edges of no other way it'll pull the edges of the mask um further in so that way you can have a bit more of like a depth of field lens blur kind of effect and you can just um adjust it as you want that way it's not such a super sharp edge compared to the rest of the image so it can kind of blend in a little bit more and then you can also um i'm not really sure i mean i shift edge yeah i think that's kind of you know to bring it in versus um you know grow or shrink the mask but anyways so we're going to zoom back out here not bad yeah, I mean, that almost kind of has like a little bit of a, a lens blur to it, which I think actually looks pretty good. We're going to jump in here one last time, kind of check like the edges of the face and stuff. Yeah, I mean, we got a little bit of blur going on here around the edges. What I might do is uh, bring that back in just a little bit, kind of unblur it so that it's not super obvious. A little bit more. Sorry, my computer runs slow when I'm recording. <laughs> okay, that to me looks more believable. Okay, so anyways, uh, so okay, we're done. Let's click okay. I gotta say, I'm actually kind of impressed uh, how this background image slightly kind of worked with this photo, like if you were doing an outdoor portrait session. And then we're gonna go back here, go away. And I'm not really sure why his face is so bright but either way oh it's because he's got red face i fixed for that anyways <laughs> so um so let me know what you guys think if you already have portrait pro 17 uh which i believe is the only version that has the background uh edit tool thingy uh if you've tried it before let me know if you've run into issues if you you know tried it and it works out great 
then you know let me know if you've also got some ideas for tweaking the edges i'm always open to suggestions and i know as more people make comments in the comment section you know we can all learn and grow from each other uh so i'm interested to see how well this would work with a more textured background i might play around with it and if i come up with something like a good example i'll make a new video for you guys to check out because i do feel like there's probably going to be some you know slight differences on how to make the adjustments and things along those lines but that's pretty much it uh why i would recommend trying this out versus what some people might normally do in photoshop is that if i can get everything for the most part done in one piece of software like in here the retouching you know any sort of like face liquify um, and then if i have to create a whole new background then i'm going to do it in here because importing exporting and then saving and then re-importing and re-exporting and all that stuff to me is a huge hassle and it creates too many additional copies so other than that let me know what you guys think i'd be really interested to hear what you have to say uh, at inside the description below is a promo code if you want to purchase Portrait Pro 17. It is for Studio Max and it's 10% off. So it's just Dustin10 in all caps. I'll provide a link down in the comment section below. And I think that's pretty much it. So let me know what you guys think. If you learned something today, please hit that like button. It definitely helps. It helps grow the channel. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button for new videos when they roll out. And other than that, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.